The majority of modern web applications need to react to certain things that happen in the browser. This can be something like the user clicking a button or entering text in an input field. To interact with events, Vue gives us the Vion directive. We bind it to any standard DOM event, like click or mouse over events. As the directive's value, we can use simple inline expressions or a method. As an example, let's create a button that changes a name data property on a click event. We'll use an inline expression to change the name's value. If we click on the button in the browser, it will change the name to the new one we specified in the Vion expression. We mentioned earlier that the Vion directive's value can be either an inline expression or a method we define in the config object. When we use a method that doesn't have any parameters, we can reference it. That's to say, we can omit the parentheses at the end. As an example, let's put our name change logic into a method and reference the method in the Vion binding. If we go to the browser and click on the button, it will change the name. To demonstrate method invoking, let's use a parameter for the method instead of hard coding the changing value. Once again, if we click on the button, it changes the name. View allows us to bind multiple methods or expressions to a single event. All we have to do is separate them with a comma. To demonstrate, let's change our example to include the ego data property that gets changed by a method when the event fires. If we go to the browser and click the button, both methods execute, changing the name and ego. It should be noted that events will be executed in the order they're specified in the directive. Because event handling is so common, the Vue team decided to create a shorthand for the Vion directive. All we need to do is replace the Vion keyword and colon with an at symbol. To demonstrate, let's change our example to use the shorthand. If we go to the browser and click on the button, the name changes like we expect. Certain events will require us to use the JavaScript event object to access specific pieces of data about the event that occurred. The event object is a JavaScript object that describes everything about the event. For example, on a click event, it will contain the exact X and Y coordinates of where the mouse was clicked on the page. When we bind an event listener that executes a method, that method will automatically receive event as its first parameter. We can use it to access any event property or method on the event object. If a method doesn't have any parameters, we don't need to specify event in the parameter list. For our example, we want to display the text from the input field on the page. We'll start with the text field and bind to the input event. As its value, we'll reference a method that will be responsible for capturing the input. Inside the method, we use the event object's target attribute to access the value of what gets typed into the text field. Then, we just assign that value to the name data property. And the last thing we need to do is output the name to the page with string interpolation. If we save and switch over to the browser, we can type a name in the text field, and it will update that name in the paragraph. If our event method has any additional parameters, the event parameter will be overridden. To demonstrate, let's add a last name to the previous example as a parameter to the method. If we go to the browser and type something into the text field, we get an error in the console. When Vue sees that there are more parameters after event, it won't automatically shift the arguments to match those parameters. This is Vue's default behavior, so we'll have to manage it ourselves. We have to use the special event instance variable as the first argument where we invoke the function. 
then we can add any other arguments we need after it. The instance variable is the keyword event prefixed with a dollar sign. To demonstrate, let's add it to our example as the first variable. This time, when we start typing a name, it shows the characters we type and adds the last name. View also allows us to have multiple methods with event access and an event handler. Because dollar sign $event is an instance variable, we can specify it in both methods, and they won't override each other. Event modifiers is another useful feature built into View that allows us to connect a modifier to an event to change the event's behavior. As an example, let's say our application has a form with a submit button. When the button is clicked, the default behavior is to submit the form and send an HTTP request to the server. The problem is, this process refreshes the page, which refreshes the application state. That means, we lose any other data on the page. To demonstrate, let's use a counter with two methods that increment and decrement the count. We also have a dummy form with a button that submits it. When we click on the buttons, the number changes as we would expect. But if we change the number, then click on the submit button, the number resets to zero. Typically, when we work with a framework like Vue, we want to prevent this default browser behavior. Instead, we want to read the user input, validate it, then send it off to the server. We can't do that if the value's lost. There's a vanilla JavaScript approach to solve this problem. We can add the prevent default method to a custom method that's referenced when the form is submitted. When we change the number and submit the form, the counter value doesn't change. This is a perfectly valid approach to solve the problem, but Vue makes it a lot easier to do the same thing with event modifiers. An event modifier is chained onto the event with dot notation. Our example uses the prevent default method. Its corresponding modifier is the prevent modifier, which is just Vue using the prevent default method behind the scenes. Let's change the example by chaining the prevent modifier to the submit event. And because Vue will now handle the behavior with the modifier, we can remove prevent default from the submit form method. If we change the number and submit the form, it works as expected. We did the exact same thing we could in JavaScript, but with less code. Vue also includes modifiers for click events, such as left, right, and middle. To demonstrate, we'll use our earlier counter example and add a right click modifier to the increment button. If we use left click, nothing happens. But if we use right click, the flyout menu appears and the counter increments. Another kind of modifier we can use is for key presses. We can use them when we're listening to keyboard events, such as those coming from an input field. As an example, let's say we have a text input field that accepts a user's name. But, we don't want to show each character as the user types, like earlier in the lesson. We want to wait until they press enter on their keyboard. For that, we would need to use the key up event to detect when the user pressed a key. Then, we need the enter modifier to check if they pressed the enter key. Once the user presses enter, a method can execute that takes the input from the text field and stores it in a data property. If we go to the browser and type a name into the text field, it won't show in the paragraph until we press enter. View has aliases for all valid keyboard event keys. We can use any valid key that's been exposed via keyboard event dot key, but only if it's converted to kebab casing. For example, page up becomes page dash up. Certain modifiers like control or alt still allows other keys to be pressed at the same time. View allows us to limit this behavior to only include the modifier we specify by chaining exact onto the key. As a demonstration, we have three buttons that each reference a method for their click event. Each method just shows an alert in the browser to
to identify which combination was pressed. The first button uses the shift modifier without exact. If we press something like shift plus alt, it will still work. The second button uses shift with exact. It only works if the shift key is pressed with the click. If we use something like control, nothing happens. The third button uses exact without any key. It won't work if any keys are pressed at the same time as the click. It's always good practice to use exact to be explicit so that the user doesn't get any unexpected results. If we want to lock dynamic content in an element, we can use the vOnce directive on it. After rendering an element for the first time, Vue will treat it as static content and won't re-render it. The vOnce directive takes no value and we can simply place it on the element. As an example, let's say we have a dynamic counter that we can increment and decrement. Suppose we also want to show the initial starting value of the number without hard coding it into the template. Typically, we would need two number data properties. One for the initial value and one that can be modified. There's nothing wrong with that approach, but Vue allows us to do the same thing without the need for a second number. We'll use the counter example that we've been using throughout the lesson and add another paragraph that displays the initial counter value by locking it with vOnce. If we change the number, the updated value changes with it, but the initial value that's locked with vOnce stays static. This has several benefits over the typical approach. We don't need a second number in the logic. We know to look for locks in the view and not the logic, so testing and debugging is easier and faster. Because Vue treats it as static after the first render, it improves performance because it won't be re-rendered. In the next video, we'll learn about input binding and basic form handling. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.